the difficulty with national service, as soon as you even mention the phrase, you know, it drums up images of drill sergeant majors in the 1950s and terrified 18 year olds. And a lot of people will say, we can't go back to that. Uh, the nation's youth wouldn't put up with it. Uh, I, I personally think that you're right. I think some form, and, and as you say, you could opt for a military option, you could opt, opt for a, a civil role. I think some form of that actually would be rather good and might just instill a bit of pride in people, might even teach a lot of people a skill of a trade that they might be able to use, you know, in civilian life. So I'm with you on the concept of it. The difficulty is how the hell do you implement it? Because you have to have the army of people to try, army in military and Point. civilian sense. You have to have the army of people there to train and teach. So it could be done. But I very much doubt you could do it without at least three years' notice. Yeah, I th just I'm not suggesting we do it. It was su suggested for consideration. I'm undecided, and then I just because it also brings the standard of the British forces down. I, I yeah, think of course. National service. Oh, oh, absolutely. That's absolutely right. It would do. Um, so you can imagine just how many people would need to be retired off from our current tiny British army. Uh, you know, the smallest army we've had since since Queen Anne. So, yeah, you know, the idea that we engage young people in their community, make them part of it, almost whether they like it or not, uh, I think would do would do a lot of good. But in practical terms, it's a long way away. How did the World War One battlefield tours that you used to conduct come about? That was a surprising one I read about. Yeah. So <laughs> I wasn't so, expecting it. Yeah, no, no. Farage is foragers. I have been the length of the Western Front in France. I've been to Gallipoli in Turkey twice. Um, uh, you know, so it, it was a subject of great interest to me. I'll tell you how it started. Like so many of us, you know, or maybe you're a, a bit younger than me, but like so many of us, I had a grandfather who was, a, who was an August 14 volunteer and who fought in France and was quite badly wounded in the First World War. Um, and so there is that sort of family bit of history. But I tell you what happened. I worked in the commodities business before politics, copper, aluminium, stuff like that. And we'd have really busy days and really quiet days. Now, the quiet days, you know, I'd sit with my feet on my desk, reading my newspapers, getting ready for lunch, if I'm being honest with you. And I remember several times looking at the obituary columns. 